I'm uh, CC from PSC. Um, today I'm sharing some of my uh, developer experience for uh, programming the uh, circuits, ZK circuits. So um, we know in uh, ZK Snark, well, we allow the prover and the verifier, they agree on the algorithm. And then prover can provide a proof, input, and the output to the verifier. And then verifier can be convinced that the computation, the output, is uh, correct corresponding to the input without recomputing the algorithm again. So uh, lots of uh, scaling and privacy uh, we are getting from the SNARKs. And I'm going to unroll this uh, uh, process more. It's not a full story, but uh, you as a circuit developer, uh, you are on the uh, left hand side. You define some constraints, and uh, and then you send a, a verifying key and proving key genera generated from the, these constraints, and send it to a verifier and a prover. We call this a, a setup time. This is like when you like finish the circuit development and de deploy the project and uh, set up is ready. But uh, at a proving time, like whenever you need to send a proof, uh, so prover would uh, run the computation and get the computation traces and fill in uh, to the circuits. And using the proving key to uh, generate a proof, and then send the proof to the verifier. Um, uh, uh, today, we don't care about like, how sausage is made. Like, we care about like, uh, the how, how do you like, like, uh, turn the computation into circuits. So if you're coming from uh, like a normal programming world, um, for example, if you write Python, C, Rust, anything, uh, you might, your brain you works with uh, function, loops, and if else, this kind of good stuff. But when you uh, enter the circuit world, you need to do the uh, arithmetic arithmetization, and you need to get the, uh, the circuit trace. So you're thinking in the computation trace of the whole computation, and you just think of, uh, to uh, verifying these computations with uh, math and equations, so it's like that. So uh, before we go into uh, introduce some uh, tricks and uh, development tips, that's uh, talk about the rules of the game, like how, how this uh, circuit thing works. Um, so first of all, like all computation is uh, represented in finite field arithmetic. So uh, a finite field element is, uh, you can think of it as an integer, and it's a positive integer and less than a, a number p. And let's say if p equals to 3, then if you have two field elements, 2 and 2, you're adding together, you actually got a result of 1 because we need to uh, do it in module of 3, module of p. And p is usually a very large number. For example, it's uh, 254 bits. Um, so uh, the takeaway is that we need to represent like uh, your computation in, in field numbers instead of bits and bytes, and uh, you need to uh, watch, out, uh, watch out for the uh, wrap over and overflow stuff. And then uh, we get this uh, grid of stuff, uh, like a paper, you can uh, fill in the uh, uh, field numbers inside those uh, cells. And uh, for if you, uh, you can expand this grid with more columns, uh, but like for every new columns you added, it, it would be more costly. 
Um, but the roles, roles are basically free, but they are uh, kept up to some limit. Uh, let's say two to the 18, like uh, this is uh, 260K roughly. So uh, ideally you want to use as much role as possible until like maybe you have more uh, computation you need to do, then you add more columns and uh, add proving calls, proving times, verifying calls, something like that. And uh, we have to uh, distinguish some types of columns. Um, uh, this, these columns are distinguished by like uh, who can see what and uh, when they are like uh, when values are assigned. So uh, we have the pink one is the advice column. Uh, it is only visible to prover. It is uh, determined at approving time. The prover uh, witness the uh, value inside this column. And we have a fixed column. Fixed column is uh, assigned at a setup time. So uh, pr uh, pr both prover and the verifier has a, uh, have a copy. And then the instance column. So this is, uh, the value is vi visible to verifier. So uh, we can, um, uh, the prover can fill in the input, then the output in a pr uh, proving time. So, uh, so that uh, we can have the, the scenario in the first slide that um, the uh, prover uh, witness some private values and then some uh, uh, public uh, instance values uh, for the input and the output using the proving key to generate a proof. And then verifier can uh, uh, verify the proof and also take the uh, 10 and 100 layer. Uh, you can verify in the contract or uh, do other verification if you may. Um, right. Okay, so um, now we have the grid, we have the columns. Uh, we need to define like uh, what values in the cells are correct or valid, like what what uh, values uh, are allowed to put in the cells. So these are constraints, and I'm going to introduce two types of uh, constraints in Halo 2. Uh, the first one is the uh, custom gates. So this defines the constraint in uh, polynomials. So the gate uh, looks like this. We have a, a we we choose the uh, a cells uh, from column A, the cells from column B, and cells from column C. You can uh, choose uh, whatever column you want, and you can choose the uh, relative position. For example, uh, I want the next. Oh, sorry. Next column uh, of the uh, in relative to the A cell, and then uh, you can define the uh, 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 sorry. You can define you can define a polynomial to um, constraint like okay, A must equal to the B plus uh, uh, B B the next cell of the B, and then. But like uh, this gate will be applied to all rows in in the column, so uh, sometimes we don't want to do that. So uh, that's why we have a selector here. So this selector will be the uh, one or zero value. So if this uh, selector is one, then the whole uh, then then this expression here must equal to zero. Then uh, our uh, constraint is enforced. But if selector is zero, then the whole expression is already zero. So uh, this constraint does not necessarily hold uh, for, for that uh, particular row. I just want to quote uh, the, the, Vital the sentence from Vitalik I heard uh, from his talk. He said, like, everything is a polynomial. I'm a polynomial. Yeah. Uh, so to give an example, uh, I borrow an example from Intel's uh, Fibonacci uh, circuit example. And we want to prove the nth term of the Fibonacci number. And then uh, we can 
filled in the uh, value of uh, one, one, two, three, uh, by anything into the grid, and we define the gates that uh, left plus right uh, must equal to the sum. And must, that means that like left plus right minus sum equals to zero. And we use the selector QFIP uh, to determine like which, uh, which role we want to enforce this constraint. So uh, here is one way to do it. Like we, we, uh, we make this gate look uh, like very straight. They are on the same rows. Uh, but you can see that we, we are using three columns here. Um, so this is an, uh, the other way you can do it. Uh, you, can, uh, you can make it like uh, the sum. You can fold, uh, fold it to the next cell. And uh, it uses less columns. And, but it works the same way. It, it, it still can give you your desired computation result. So it's uh, flexible. You can uh, determine the, the shape of the gates uh, depends on uh, your, your problem to solve. And the second, uh, second tool to uh, constrain the grid value is copy constraints. So uh, I have this uh, yellow tab here to group the values of uh, two cells together. And if they are glued, so uh, the value assigned in the cells must equal. And this is determined, the glue must be determined at a setup time. There is no way you can change it at a proving time. Uh, but it's very cheap and use it as uh, much as possible. The final rule is that the prover can be evil. Like, I like to think prover or like everything with a verb, prover, verifier, minors, things like that. As a cyborg, uh, they are the human who runs the machine. And like machine runs the algorithm, but like human are attracted by incentives. And they, they could do all kinds of stuff. So uh, if you didn't write your circuit right, prover can witness the wrong values and still convince the verifier to do stuff. So if uh, you are like, designing a decentralized mixer for this, and prover witness some value, they can like withdraw the money out of the air, then your, your project is <laughs> uh, uh, hacked. OK, so uh, let's get into tricks. Um, OK, let's start from the simple one. How do we uh, limit it, uh, limiting the options in one cell? For example, I want this cell uh, to allow only values one or two or three, uh, nothing else. So. Uh, to do this, we, uh, we can define a gate uh, that has uh, this expression, uh, the cell value minus 1 times cell value minus 2 times cells x, uh, cell value minus 3 equals to 0. If you uh, plug in the 3 into the cell, uh, this expression will be uh, 0. But if you uh, plug in this 100, then um, this uh, expression would be like 99 times 98 times 97. Uh, it won't be 0, so uh, this constraint is not satisfied. If you uh, witness 0, uh, this would not satisfy either. Next, that's converting if and else. Um, so for example, we have um, this uh, sample program here. We have, uh, uh, we have input A, input B, and uh, uh, there are like field elements, and ha happy is a, a like a boolean value. And if happy, then we do a plus b. Uh, if we are not happy, we do a times b. And then, so uh, for example, we could have a, a circuit that looks like this. Um, I use the the glue to glue the uh, public instance value to the private value. In the left, left one, we can see that uh, witness A as 5 and B as 6, and happy as 1. So we are doing the addition path. So we got the uh, uh, value 11. And the second one, uh, we still have the same AB value, but 
happy is zero, and the uh, desired output is 30. Uh, we, we just gave an example here. We haven't constrained them. The way uh, you, you turn this uh, if else into the gate expression would be uh, happy times uh, a plus b uh, plus 1 minus happy times uh, a multiplied b uh, minus output equals to 0. So that uh, if, you, uh, if your happy is 1, then this expression will be enabled, and this expression will be disabled. Uh, the other way is the same. If the happy is 0, then this expression is in enabled, and this expression is disabled. So uh, let's see. Um, we, uh, we have like uh, uh, example value witness in here. Uh, these are all satisfied, um, but uh, like we kind of forget something here. Like Fruber can witness three here and still got us three times uh, uh, five plus six and, uh, and like get the output minus 27 equals to zero. So what's wrong here? Uh, it's because that uh, every input is uh, uh, a finite field element, but uh, if we want Boolean value here, we need another constraint to make it Boolean. So we need this additional con uh, constraint here to limit the happy to be 1 or 0. So using the tricks before. OK, uh, next uh, we need to uh, convert the loops into the uh, circuit. And uh, this, uh, let's start with an easy one. This function uh, initiates a variable r as 0, and then it uh, runs the loop five times and uh, add the five, uh, add the r, uh, to, uh, add five to r and do it five times. And like five, these are our constants. So uh, it will be easy to uh, lay out like uh, the value of r uh, started with zero and the next uh, plus five, plus five, plus five, all the way to the output. And then we constrain the uh, value uh, zero to zero, 25 to uh, the output to the output. So uh, we will have this uh, gate expression like this. Easy. But uh, what about this? Uh, this looks like exactly the same loop, uh, except uh, like how many times of loop is determined by the uh, prover input and here. So uh, this will be uh, a lot trickier um, because um, you might have a uh, so uh, we, uh, we can imagine the computation trace looks like this. Um, first, uh, put our inputs the end here, and the output uh, 25 here. And uh, three, uh, or, or input 3 here, and input here. And notice that uh, this, uh, this algorithm, this is basically the uh, very in efficient way to do five, ty five times n. And also note that uh, this n could be like arbitrary large, but like we don't have an arbitrary large uh, circuit. So like we cannot do the infinite loops. We, we, we can only do like only up to certain amount of uh, uh, computation. So we need to like restrict this, how big this n could be. Uh, let's say we restrict it to five. And then we need another check to make sure that n is actually less than 5, but it's out of scope of this talk. Um, uh, we want to focus on how like, to uh, determine the, uh, the computation of r inside. So uh, yeah, let's first uh, do the copy gate for 0 to 0 and the output to output. But because the copy gate uh, output can only uh, locate it at the same place of the uh, cell. So, so if the end is free, we need to like repeat the result here. All right. Uh, so, 
Um, one attempt is uh, to solve this is we add a, a prover witness uh, selector here. So uh, let's put one 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 here uh, when we uh, when when we are still in a range of n, and then zero 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 here to do the repeat. And using the if else trick we learned before, uh, we can define this gate expression. Uh, but then, how do you prevent like like the prover doing this? So like uh, if prover like they don't follow the rules, they uh, uh, witness zero and like one, and then go back to zero and one. And uh, if you do the math, you can. Realize that prover can win a three and like output to to be ten, then it convinces you that five times three is ten. Then yeah, it, it's a, it's a failure. The people say it's like blockchain is all about trust. I would say blockchain is all about trust issues. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's observe like like the. Um, like different cases of n, like n is zero, n is three, n is five, and uh, we observe that s can only like for the uh, valid case that uh, you can start with zero, but once you are zero, you can only go with zero uh, of the rest of the row. You can start with one, and uh, you can. Turn one to zero any time, but like once you turn to zero, there is no way to turn back. So uh, we can identify the state transition uh, like this. Uh, so uh, this is a trick uh, Han uh, taught me. So you, uh, when you start, uh, you can start at a, a eight state. That means we need to add five. And you can, uh, from A state, you can go back to A state. You can go to the pad state, which is, uh, which is a zero, and like, like uh, the R remains the same. And, but uh, the point here is that once you enter the pad state, there is no way to go back to the S state. So uh, we can define the constraint here. Uh, and the actually uh, the only thing we need is here. Um, like if you are, uh, if the current cell S is zero, uh, for example here, then the next cell must be zero. So uh, this constraint can help you achieve that. And also we need to make sure the selector is binary. Um, now. Uh, uh, we, we have a final touch, like to um, uh, make the input uh, accumulate this input value and copy back to input. Uh, this still follows the same same rules from the uh, prover witness selector. Um, so, like, uh, why are we uh, doing all these tricks? Why why? Uh, why we need to like doing this uh, repeating and like uh, state transition thing? Uh, because like in CPU, uh, the, the in, uh, we take instruction one of the time, and if you um, have an if else branch, and if the branch you didn't enter, that just you can forget it and you don't compute it. But for a circuit. Um, you need to flatten all the computation, all paths you need to uh, include it in your circuit. And then, so you can see here, even though uh, we only uh, witness uh, input three here, and these three rows, we, we still need to need them and like uh, witness some dummy values there. Uh, because we need to consider the case that prover could win us five here and like use all these spaces. The takeaway here is that the challenge for a circuit developer is that uh, we are working with the computation trace instead of the execution itself. So we need to flatten the path and like uh, work uh, all, all possible paths of your computation. Uh, the second is that because we are working with a uh, field element instead of bits and bytes, so we need to do some math and equations there. 
And the third is that uh, we need to work with a verification mindset because prover could be witness uh, malicious values inside your circuits. And uh, the tricks we talked about here are like uh, using the Boolean value and uh, uh, one, one time uh, times the true path and uh, the other uh, times the false path. This can convert the if else statement into the, uh, the, the, the circuit expression. And for the complicated loops, you need to identify the uh, state transition uh, uh, of, of the, uh, your, your program logic and then uh, design uh, constraints for them. Uh, yeah, that, uh, that's my talk. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Uh, do I have time? Yeah. I thought that in Plunk, yeah. the copy constraints were expensive. Um, can you expand on why they are cheap in Halo 2? Um, I think they are. I think they are the same. I, uh, I think it, that they are cheap in terms of when you use uh, once and like you use it million times. They are they are the same cost. So I I think yeah. That's, that's the idea. Okay. Thank you. Great presentation. Hey, for somebody that wants to learn more about CK proofs, what path do you recommend to go? Uh, right now, I think uh, the circuit explanation is really good, but I got lost in some bits. So what would you recommend me to, to read in order to, to follow you better? I would recommend try to find a simple circuit project and try to run it, try to tweak it, like removing something, and, and try to study it. I think that would be the uh, good way to learn how circuit works. You mentioned like in the, yeah, here in takeaway points that you have to prevent the prover from cheating. How often do you see when you're writing circuits that how often do you find bugs because your circuit was under constraint and the, the prover can cheat? Oh, uh, good question. Uh, so the, uh, the question is that, uh, like, how, how do we find if there are bugs? In the or how often does it happen that you find a bug because it's under constraint and the prover can cheat? Um, or I because the, the constraints, if the constraints are wrong, if the gates are wrong, or just trying to compare it to, like, usual software development, um, when you just basically write the logic wrong, right? Um, how often do you see that the gates that you come up with um, are doing the wrong thing? Um, so when we are developing the circuit, uh, oftentimes we'll uh, like realize, oh, we forget this constraint, and like prover could witness that bad values. Uh, like we, we found a lot of bugs in like development stage. But like once you want to go to the production, uh, like we will like do some external audits and like try to find as much bugs as possible. And uh, like when you en really enter the production, uh, like you can only like cross your fingers. And but like I heard Vitalik has an idea that says they uh, they can use like two provers for the rollups and like if they can uh, witness uh, like they can create a valid proof or two different outputs, then you can like stop the rollup or stop your application then and then do the fix. So you when you write the Halo two circuits, you're writing in the using the Rust lib, right? Um, do you think that that adds a lot of overhead compared to if you were using a DSL like Circom uh, or Zocrates, for example? I definitely feel like Circom or like, like DSL are more readable, more auditable. But the thing is, when you don't have DSL, you, you just have to. <laughs> so, work you, with. You, so you would like to have a DSL for Halo 2? Uh, I like what? Would you like to have a DSL for, for Halo 2? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that would be that would be desired and great to have a DSL for Halo 2, yeah. I thought someone released one some months ago, didn't they? Or uh, I, maybe I dreamed that, but... I don't know. Any, anyone out here know? 
I think it was someone from Dark Fight that posted on the, the ZK Podcast Telegram group. Oh, oh it sounds but great. But maybe I also dreamed that. I don't know. Thank you. Yeah.